Hello and welcome back to this series of videos on how to make sounds on your microcorg. Um, so uh, we're back to patch A15 and today we're going to have a look at how the filter on the microcorg works. The filter, you can access the section by turning the knob to filter, is what gives subtract subtractive synth synthesis the subtract. Or let me rephrase that, that was terrible. Uh, the filter puts subtract into subtractive synthesis. There we go. That's what I wanted to say. All right. So we're on uh, the filter section. There we go. The first knob is a selector knob that allows you to choose what kind of filter you want. And we're going to go through all of them. So uh, let's start off with this 24L. What does that mean? 24 refers to de 24 decibels. L refers to low pass, um, and 24 decibels refers to the curve of the filter, okay? And I'm going to explain what that means in a minute. Uh, first up, let me show the raw effect of a filter on the sound, okay? So as you can see, the filter changes the tone of the sound quite dramatically. What's it doing really? Think of it like a tsunami, okay? So you have the wave. Uh, think, first of all, think of your sound as a city and think of the filter as a tsunami. So the, the filter is sweeping through from the high frequencies in this case to the low frequencies. Everything that has already been on the path of the filter slash tsunami has been destroyed. So you cannot hear it. And then as you sweep through, you start removing high frequency content then mid frequency content, and then right at the end, low frequency content. So here when the filter is open, we hear everything. Here we've uh, basically shaved off some of the sound. So some of that high frequency content has been removed. We're only really getting some mid frequency content here. All the way down. Now everything's been removed, including the low frequency content. Okay, so this is the select knob. This is your cutoff knob. Ignore the labels at the top here when you are using uh, the different sections, the different programming sections here or here, okay? Okay, the next knob, the third knob, is the resonance knob, okay? Let me explain what that means. Imagine your wave again, your tsunami, or your filter wave. The resonance creates a sort of peak right at the tip of where the 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 curve kind of goes down the curve of the wave goes down it creates a tip and it accentuates or it excites those frequencies at that point at that leading edge okay let me show you what i mean Okay, as you heard in that example, we could go f way, way down in terms of the of closing the filter and still hear sound coming through. Why was that? Because while a lot of the sound was being removed, there was this section right at the leading edge of the filter curve that was being excited by the resonance. And that basically in increases or decreases the, the level of the, of the hump right there at the edge of the, uh, um, of the filter curve, which, yeah, very technical terms here, as you can see. Okay, so that's the 24 
dB filter. Next up, the 12 dB filter, also with an L, showing that it is a low pass filter, therefore that it's moving from the high end of the frequency spectrum to the low end of the frequency spectrum. Um, 12 decibels, I believe, per second. Um, and that means that it's a much gentler curve, so the filtering effect will be less aggressive than with the 24 dB per second filter that we saw in the previous uh, example. Okay, so let me open it all the way up. Pretty much the sound that we have come to expect, the sound that we started off with coming from the oscillators, not affected at all. Also, I would like to note that if you look uh, when the filter is all the way open with the 24 dB, there is a teeny bit of filtering still going through, and I believe that that is um, part of the emulation of an analog filter that the micro that the microcorg tries to achieve, in the sense that uh, there are limitations in the analog design um, because the 24 dB filter is much more aggressive, even when it's all the way open, not letting everything through, but the 12 dB filter is gentler. So all the way open allows all of it through, or to our ears, everything through. All right, so let's sweep through and see how it sounds. As you can see, even when it is closed all the way, we're still getting some of the sound still coming through. Okay, now let's uh, see how the resonance works with the twelve d uh, with the twelve dB low pass filter. As you can see, uh, uh, when the filter is open and the resonance is up, it gives the sound a very fizzy quality, uh, which wasn't there originally. And that's because, of course, even if it's up, uh, even if the filter is open all the way, the resonance is still exciting um, a, a part of the frequency spectrum. Um, now, one thing that I didn't demonstrate with the tw uh, with the uh, twenty four dB uh, low pass filter was that if you turn the sound all the way down, the sorry, the uh, cutoff all the way down, and the resonance all the way up, this is what happens. Actually, and then if I open the filter a little bit, look. you get a sort of uh, a very pure sine wave almost tone. Um, and it's even more pronounced with the 24 dB low pass filter. Let's see what happens there. That's very loud, very shrill, but still very, um, it, it's a sine wave basically. And that's with the cutoff, uh, sorry, with the resonance all the way up and the cutoff somewhere in the middle or in the low regions. What's happening there? Um, essentially, this is an emulation of a behavior in analog filters called self-oscillation, which is when the resonance is all the way up and when the cutoff is uh, engaged, so when the filter is somewhat closed, um, the filter will produce its own tone on top of whatever you're filtering. And there are certain filters that even, uh, you know, filters come in very different fl uh, very different flavors because they have different designs. And uh, some of them can even, you can even play the notes. In this one, you, you just get a, a basic tone. And it seems like the cutoff knob defines the sort of pitch of it. All right, let's move on. Uh, so we did the 24, the 12 uh, low pass filters. Then you have the bandpass filter, which I'm going to come back to in a minute, but first I want to go to the last one, which is the high-pass filter. 
Now, what is that? It's the opposite of the low-pass filter. Uh, so instead of moving from the high end of the frequency spectrum, sweeping through, destroying everything in its path all the way <laughs> to the uh, low end of the frequency spectrum, it goes in the opposite direction. So it starts off at the low end of the frequency spectrum and then destroys everything in its path all the way up to the high, uh, to the high end of the frequency spectrum. Let's see what that sounds like. All right, let me turn down the resonance all the way. Um, let me turn the cutoff all the way. So at this point, the, uh, the filter is completely open. That is because it's letting all the sound through. It hasn't uh, cut off any of the frequencies. But let's see what happens when I start cutting off some of those low, fre low frequencies. As you can hear, the sound becomes thinner because I'm taking away frequencies. First the low frequencies, then the mid frequencies, and then by the end of it, only the high frequencies are left. As you can hear. Okay, so let's see what happens when I add some resonance. Let's say here, at a midpoint. So this is without resonance. Okay, and now let's put some resonance. So again, the resonance um, creates a peak right at the edge of the curve where the frequencies are cut off um, and kind of highlights, underlines, accentuates, excites those frequencies in that very narrow area. Now, because of this, a lot of people think that the high pass filter is only usable to kind of make, uh, make things sound ethereal, or ethereal, sorry, or uh, fragile, or boxy, or you know, or thin. But actually, the high pass filter is a secret weapon to create really powerful basses. Um, this may not be very apparent with this patch because I didn't design this patch to be like a bass. I designed it more for uh, for melodies. But the secret is turn up the resonance. Okay, so you're exciting the frequencies right there at the leading edge of the of of the curve, turn down the cutoff to a low area. And the, here you need to play it by ear, basically, because you, you want to be exciting frequencies at the low end of the spectrum without losing the high end content of your sound. This is what happens. <laughs> to begin with, you want to have a low note. So, this is without anything. Okay, so that's that's your basic sound without any filter. Okay? Listen carefully. I'm going to turn up the resonance. If the the cutoff is all the way up, you can't hear anything. But let's go to the lower ranges. You see that the low p the low frequencies there are boosted because they're uh, they're highlighted by the resonance here. So the high pass filter is a secret weapon to create bases that have low end punch, but do not lose the high end content. Okay. All right, now to the bandpass. The bandpass, in a way, is a uh, greatest hits of all filters because it allows you to focus on a narrow band of frequencies anywhere, okay? The, the frequencies before that narrow band are, ignore, are uh, destroyed or attenuated, and the frequencies after that narrow band are attenuated. So it's not like the low pass, where it's kind of like a tsunami, uh, which everything that's, uh, that's been in the path of, of the filter has been removed. Uh, here it's just really, it's more surgical. It's focusing on a narrow area. Everything else is removed or attenuated 
uh, heavily, and only that narrow area passes through. So let's see what that sounds like. First, without resonance, okay? So uh, let's start at the low end. Because this is a kind of, uh, I'm on a lower octave, you can hear a little bit of sound coming through. Let's increase, let's go to more to the mid frequencies. You can hear the mid frequencies, but we've lost that low frequency content, and we're not really hearing that much high frequency stuff going on. Let me go to here. You can see that there. Now, if I go to a high frequency, very buzzy, very tinny, only the high frequency is coming through. Now, the resonance works in the same way. It excites or underlines the frequencies at, at the peak of, the, of that narrow band, right? So let's see what happens when you're in the, in the low registers. So that's nice. That could be very useful for creating basses again in the mid-range. Kind of somewhat thin, uh, has some of the qualities of a high-pass filter. Okay, and then in the high, uh, the high ranges of the sound. Adding some of that buzz that, it, that we hear with a, uh, a low-pass filter uh, almost all the way open and with the, with the resonance turned up. And that is the Korg Micro Korg filter. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh